the season has just begun, but already we have an international break. It's the first games of the European Championship qualifiers, and the tournament's alive again. What do we have to fear? The team's revitalised, Strachan's got his men in order, and things are looking up, and it's Germany first. But we'll discuss that in a little second. Firstly, to welcome our resident pundits, Mark Burchill and Sandy Clark. Welcome, guys. How are you So, it's the Euro qualifiers. How do you think Scotland are going to do? As in qualifier, this game, or... Just this know? game. Uh, it's obviously, I think that... For me, it's actually not a bad one to get Germany in the first game. You know, they've won the... Obviously won the, the World Cup. They're in... They're, they're top of their game. They're flying. They've got some unbelievable players. And you've got absolutely nothing to lose going to Germany. I think that, you know, Sandy will tell you. Going as the underdog sometimes, you play without pressure. You know, and especially against... against you know, it couldn't be any bigger underdogs going to Germany. I, I'm... I'm quite confident they can they can put up a good show. I'm not saying they're going to win. I'm not saying they're going to get a point. But I think Scotland the, under Gordon Strachan they're playing really well. I think I think they'll do okay. I I, I agree with you, but see, I think uh, we've spoken the show a few times about about uh, Gordon Strachan and how well he's performed as the head coach of the national team. We've progressed up the rankings, and I think it's it's worked out really well for us. The fact that possibly our hardest game will be Germany away, and if you get something from it, it's a massive bonus. If you get a really good solid performance, it's a massive bonus. And if you lose a game one or two nil or one or two one three one something like that, then it's damage limitation. I'll be fine. But uh, I'll be out the road, and uh, you know again build on the, the belief and the confidence that's there. Uh, we are a decent team. We're not. We're not flash. We're not uh, uh, the most attractive going forward team in the world. But we're effective now. And the the great thing for me from a from a coaching point of view is. Working with Gordon Strachan, the players know what to do when they've got the ball and they know what to do when they don't have the ball. And that's called organisation. And if you've got that and you've got attitude and, and desire and hunger, you've got a chance. We'll do all right. I think we'll do OK. We probably will lose the game, if we're being honest, but we'll, we'll do fine. We'll come out with a bit of credit. I think one of the points you said there is vital. We're getting it out of the way. Because if you, if you go out and play another couple of teams, maybe Georgia or Republic Ireland, and you're not getting the points and you suddenly need to go to Germany and go and get a point, you know, it becomes much more difficult and much more pressure. So I'm... As I say, I'm quite confident as well that we're going to put a good performance. But what if it goes the other way? But just saying, getting out of the way, you know, say one if word, you, if Brazil. Get, <laughs> uh, if we get beat six, seven, nothing, then it's they're the world champions. They're the best. You know, I think that you just you just put it behind you and move on to the next game. You know, I think it's one of uh, for me. No matter what happens, Scotland can't be any worse off. Of it, you yeah, but but, but think, you guys often talk about how you try to pick a team up again after a, a bad result. So if it goes wrong right at the start. But, well, I'll, I'll tell you the answer to that. It won't go wrong. It won't go a six or seven. Ah, I agree with that totally. Because, you know, you're talking about Brazil, Germany, Brazil, World Cup, the incredible result when they played each other. But remember, tactics, David Luiz, that's enough. You know, they were all over the place, Brazil. They thought they could go out and use their natural ability and that would be enough to win the game. Scotland, we don't have that ability of the Brazilians, but we've got organisations, as I said, and we'll, we'll have determination and we'll be solid. We might lose a game 2-0, we might lose it 3-0 but it won't go much worse than that. I'm pretty certain that will be the case because damage limitation, I'm interested in see how we think the team will be, but it'll almost certainly be a 4-5-1 formation, mixing up in the middle of the park a little bit, and that's hard to break down. And if you stick at it and you don't open out, even if you're losing 1-0, then you don't end up getting a, a spanking. Obviously, Germany have just had a bit of you know, doing to their standards, getting yep. beat 4-1 mm-hmm. up Argentina, you know. So uh, they'll be hurting, they'll be wanting to win, but then... Maybe they're in a bit of a hangover for the World Cup. Maybe they're they're thinking it's just going to happen for them. So it could be a great time. You never know to get them. You you never never know. You might be able to go and sneak a you know we beat France in France. You know no one ever would have taken us to do that. You never ever know. Yeah, got to be optimistic. These Absolutely. games sometimes play into Scotland's hands, don't you think? When nothing's really expected of them, they sometimes go out and perform, like you said, in France and yeah. beating Italy and things yeah. like that. I think it. Over the years, Scotland have always tripped up in the smaller nations. You know, I think that was you perform against the big teams and you're gallant losers. At the end of the day, we lose it in goal difference or points. But this this time with Gordon Strachan in charge, I think you know, I think he, he does the basics right. So I think we'll we'll beat the smaller teams. So if you can get anything off the bigger, th- obviously Germany, then you, you know, it's a bonus for you. I think we'll qualify this time, if I'm honest. How do you think you'll play, Butch? What, what system would... Uh, I think it's going you to... You guys be, at Livingston, if it was you who's going to play Germany, what would you play? What system? Would, you'd play a 4 2 three, one, slash 4 5 one, You know, very... You know, I think that's the way forward in football when you try and counter-attack. You know, you play 
almost when you lose the ball, two very tight banks of four with one just in front. Uh, and you're obviously a striker staying up the pitch when you're defending and try and counter attack. You know, I think that's that's got to be the way. And we, I think we have an Anya on one side and probably Naismith in the middle and possibly Maloney on the other side. You've got real pace there, so you're going to try and you know soak up the pressure yeah. and try and hit them on the counter attack. I think we're players who know their job. To say that that organisation thing again, and uh, that is going to be absolutely massive when it when the game comes along. I'm interested in one or two positions. McGregor will he play in goals? I think he's. I think he's probably got to. Oh, you know, Marshall's a top keeper as well, yeah. but you know, I think that McGregor playing the Premiership, you know, I think that he he's been the number one. I think he he'll, he'll, he'll stay in there. Interesting, uh, Craig Gordon back in the squad as well. Brilliant, fantastic. Uh, one of my ex-teammates, uh, you know, I, I, one of the, he's, he's the best goalkeeper. I played with McGregor as well. I played with uh, Craig Gordon, but for me, Gordon's and actually Marshall when he was a young boy at Celtic. But Gordon's the best I played with. The <coughs> incredible goalkeeper. So from be it for so long, get himself back into. the Scotland squad's unbelievable, really good. I think it's really good management from Gordon Strachan. I read a piece maybe a fortnight ago uh, and he was saying he was going to bring Craig Gordon back into the squad, not because he's a brilliant goalkeeper, because he doesn't know him, but he's got a reputation when he was in the team before, he did exceptionally well, and he wants to see if he's going to fit into the the, the camaraderie, the kind of uh, attitude and the, the feeling they've got within the camp. So I think he's a brilliant management. Yeah, we mentioned that last week, didn't we? Is this the first in a while that Scotland have had this well from top class goalkeepers definitely really really brilliant goalkeepers you know I think that there was uh, Alan McGregor was quoted maybe going to go to Arsenal for 12 million I think that uh, oh, sorry Marshall was talking about going to Arsenal you know and it shows you know your second your third choice keeper you know they're, they're maybe going to go to a top four premiership team it shows you we're in real it, it helps your defenders as well doesn't it definitely if you've got a decent goalkeeper behind you what a difference it makes but, but I think uh, what you're saying is right but I think it'll be one up top there's no doubt about that but definitely won't go to the Czechoslovakia route, will we? Check no, four, I, I, four six. I hope. <laughs> exactly. But, that that uh, almost finished. Craig Levine yeah, right there. And uh, then. Nate Smith at Everton is doing exceptionally well. I think Stephen Fletcher. You know, there'll be a bit of discussion between the coaches who's going to start. Could Nate Smith play a bit deeper or play wide and Fletcher through the middle? It might depend on one or two wee knocks that they'll go. But but Dan Fletcher would think would would probably play in the middle of the park as well. Yeah. Uh, a play, and if he does play, it will be in the middle of the park, obviously. So maybe a kind of four one four one almost formation. But as I say, Gunn's tracking it. It will be the ten players will know their job, and I think that gives us a right chance to. To not as I say to win the game, but a real chance of having a real solid performance. I mean, the group ov- overall. Do you think that we've got a really good chance of getting out of that group? Uh, for me, uh, you know, Republic of Ireland, Ireland is, is the team in there that causes that wee bit of problem. You know, because that becomes a derby game. Uh, you know, if that were, uh, I'm not sure the other teams in that pot. That, that you know, there was a, a loads of other teams that I thought we can beat them. We can beat them. Yep, we can beat Republic of Ireland. But they, then that becomes a derby game. And it, then it gets, kind of gets thrown out the window. Your form, yeah. you know. So Georgia in there as well. You know they're the kind of difficult teams that you know, Poland that were, you know, we're probably expecting to beat, but they're going to be difficult. You know, really difficult games. But I fancy as I think we're yeah, strong. I think enough. we'll get a real chance. We've got that optimism now. That it's like uh, it's a mini league. So you you've got you know we we, we say in Scotland with, with the league that Livingston play in, Albion Rovers play in, Celtic play in, Rangers play in. You, you, you look at them and go, the best team will win the league and the second best team will be around about that area and that's where we've got to be we've got to make sure we're the second best team anyway predictions come on Gary what do you think I'm going to go for a draw I think it'll be one each one each good Liz well I'm ever the optimist I'm listening to you two and if you're saying that yeah we're definitely on the right no you're listening closely we're saying we're capable of doing well (laughs) we're capable of a good performance (laughs) which I was a bit concerned about it being the first game and thinking you know what if it doesn't go well so I'm thinking Mm. I'm going to say a draw. I'm going to say we're going to get a draw. One I'm, each. I'm going to go for a, a 2 1 narrow defeat. We'll score first, then Germany will, will wear us down in the second half and we've we'll got a couple of goals. Well, I'm half. going for 1 0 Scotland. I'm not agreeing with you. See, I was going to go for that. I thought they'd feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope they do well. And, of course, and, and good, good luck to everyone in the squad. And, absolutely. And, and all the travelling fans. And the enjoy ones it. Enjoy yep, absolutely. it. Absolutely. Let's get a good start to the tournament. Yep, yep. So. That's our thoughts on the Scotland game on Sunday. Hope everybody tunes in and tweet us in uh, when the game's on and let us know where you're watching it and who you're watching it with. Um, Join us after the break. We'll have Graham Landles from Livingston Community AFC.
Welcome back to Affinity Football here on Affinity TV, talking about the big boys there, looking at the international game coming up at the weekend. But of course, here on Affinity Football, we cover all aspects of football, especially around here in West Lothian. And in that vein, I'm delighted to say this is now our amateur section, the amateur football section of the show, and delighted to welcome Graham Landles of Livingston Community FC, who's got himself squashed right into the middle of the couch there between Sandy and Birch. I'm not going to say who's taken up the most room. <laughs> well, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the amateur section, obviously this is your, your 40, Graham. You're obviously out there at the weekends covering the, the West Lothian amateur football. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I'm obviously getting out there trying to cover as many teams as I can. And I've not actually managed to see Livingston uh, Community Club yet, but I'm sure I'll, I'll get these in at some point, Graham. So how's, how's the start of the season went for you? Um, it's it's went not too bad in, in my eyes. Uh, we've moved up from winning the league last year into the Premier League, so we're playing against better teams. Uh, so we've had a mixed start. We've won one, drew one, and lost one. That's okay. It was, it, was, it, was a, it was a harvester that beat us, so yeah, it was they beat most teams. So, yeah. um, but it's, we know it's going to be a long half season, but we're really looking forward to it and hoping to do well. Hey, right, Graham, explain this one is then. Yeah. You've got a wee trophy round about here. Um, this one is uh, that's the league trophy for last year. We won oh. League Division One. Um, it's only our second year as an amateur football team, so Good. it was really. Did you, really win, did you win it by a, a mile? Did you win it by? We won it a point fairly a easily. We, we only lost three games really? during the season, and we drew yeah. one. We won the rest. Good. So it was hard fought because, like I say, it was only our second year yeah. at amateur. Uh, most of the boys are quite a young team. So they all came up for under 19s, decided to right. skip under 21s and go straight to the amateur. So in the first season, everybody kind of thought with them just being young laddies, they'll get hammered out every week. Yep. But we managed to finish fifth, and then the following season, we won. Got so good for win. And did you, have you, from your promotion in the summer, have you lost a lot of your players? Are you okay? Did the guys mm. all stick with the same group for this year? We've mostly kept the same team we Good. lost uh, three or four players but we've brought in three or four players as well right. did the three or four move up the way or sideways or down the way or um, are you glad to be rid of them that's probably what I'm saying have you moved your squads they might be watching and <laughs> so, uh, I just tell them it's alright some of them they went to teams in this league right. uh, did the harvest just pinch anyone no they never pinched it was Broxburn pinched uh, our player of the year it. John Smith <laughs> See um, you, John Smith. <laughs> right, so wait, wait till, wait till Augustin play you. <laughs> but um, he'd been at the club for years since right. he was like a wee boy and just thought it was time for a change. So To be fair, I'm being flippant. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's, it's good to move on. I'm sure he went with you know, no hard feelings with the whole thing. I so will. What, what position you played yourself then? Yeah, I remember you as a f flying forward when you were a bit younger. Aye, well, that was back in the day, but I'm still playing up front when I can. But right. I've played practically every position. You scored a few goals last season? Aye, I finished um, like third top scorer. Good. So, But this season, our goalkeeper was away on holiday a couple of weeks ago, so I had to fill in goals. Was that, was that the game you got beat? <laughs> well, it was one of the games you got beat. <laughs> <laughs> I got man of the match. <laughs> if it As a been, goalie? Uh, if it hadn't been for me, it would have been worse. Uh, <laughs> maybe yeah. that's why Gordon Stark has named three goalies in case one of them goes on holiday. It's interesting, <laughs> you, you know, what we've spoken the show a lot about Harvester because they've you know, had such a successful team recently. And you said you drew with them? No, we got beat. Did they beat you? Yeah, but what was, was the score? Eight three. Eight three. You won eight goals in that game, eh? No, our keeper came back thankfully. She <laughs> <laughs> so. obviously had a good ball. <laughs> 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 he wishing he stayed away, but never mind. But um, <laughs> was, there, was there a big golf harvester? Obviously, top of the league at the moment, scoring uh, a lot of goals. Yeah. They're uh, they're quality. Yeah, uh, just, yeah. just changed through. Yeah. We gave them a hard game. They did have to work. The thing oh, about the thing oh, about the harvesters this year is they've uh, they've obviously won the league in the Scottish Cup last year and they've went to Chelsea and they've got Bernard three or four good yeah, players yeah. in so they're going to be unstoppable yeah. this season you know yeah. so it's to to lose eight three is probably quite a good score against uh, yeah. the harvester if I'm honest you know? yeah I've seen them having a few big results Goal. sort of double figures yeah. and things like that well that was the the least amount they've scored so far this season yeah was it so, yeah. Aye, so yeah. we're doing it bad and like I said. We made them work for it. Yeah. But it's just their quality all over yeah. the park. See, but, but, but sure in the nose, far as harvester goes, how the how why are they so good? <laughs> no, I think well, I think it's you know what it's like. You're you're they're the best team now, so they're now the Celtic or Rangers of Scotland. Right, so you can right. attract all the other players. You know, right. everyone now wants to get to the team who's uh, who's won the league, won the Scottish Cup. So 
the best players for all the other leagues. I think they've taken a taken a couple of players for juniors as well. So yeah, they get everyone the, what's the, good, the, the people can uh, they can go and pick who they want. Aye, they can uh, they can from this area they can almost take any yeah. player they want. You know, uh, the, the, they've taken a wee boy David Swan who was actually on trial with Livingston last year. He was at Bathgate Juniors and he they've taken him now and he's uh, you know I think he scored like something like fourteen or fifteen yeah. in, in yeah, the first three good. games. Great. What's your what's your kind of uh, ambition for the season? You've obviously started reasonably well. I will. Well, is, it, is it survival? Well, Stay up? I think we're probably a bit more ambitious than yes. that. We're looking to be in the top half for when it splits. Right. And uh, hopefully take it from there, get a good Scottish Cup run and good run in a couple of the Many other games clubs. before it splits? I know, um, I know. you play each team once, so right. we've got 15 games. So. Right. Um, let's say we're sitting mid-table right now. Good. So, so you're on target? We're on target. Hopefully we will finish mid-table and then we finish top of our group in the Energy Wise Cup so we're through through into that, good, through into good, the, good. Through into that no, as well so. Graham was saying it hasn't been to, to see you guys training or playing yet where do you, where do you actually play where's home for, for Livingston uh, it's up at Yellowburn Park Yellowburn Park uh, it's yeah. nice they're nice new pitches aren't mm. they is that a grass one or is it one of the new Astro ones no it's, it's just a grass, grass one that's good Aye. and uh, we train at Muriston and now just at Bankton right no, yeah. but what, what about your training nights when, it, when it's amateur is it one night a week two nights a it's week it's just one night an, a week but um We've got a squad of about twenty players, and we right. generally have about sixteen. Yeah, at least. Not. Uh, good. So, so you taking the training? You there? I'm, I'm now? helping. I. Um, I got asked How do you find that? At first, um, I was a bit sort of nervous and apprehensive because the boys that I'm playing with. Yeah. And I'm so I'm wondering how they're going to feel with me actually telling them what to do. What to do? But they're a great bunch of lads, so they're they're listening and they're trying to take on what I'm like my experience because I'm a bit older than yeah. them. Just like that. Uh, just uh, <laughs> so, uh, it's it's great, great though, because, because the, what you've said yourself as much you know as well as I do that for a team to be successful and you obviously won the league last year you're doing alright this year you mentioned kind of spirit and enthusiasm and hard work and attitude mm -hmm. that's all the, that, that's the most important ingredient you might be yeah. able to play a wee bit yeah. but the other bits are the things that make you a team but and, you can see that from Graham's point of view as well you two have probably um, experienced that too you experienced it just now mm -hmm. Mark was the, the fact that your player ah, assistant right, yeah. manager you know and, and Sandy you did it I think at heart she ended up managing guys that you had played with yeah. so mm -hmm. I mean it's, I, I take it it's not easy no, it's no easy. I think that as long as you're fair with people, you know, I think that as long as you're not treating yourself differently from the rest, you know, I, I wouldn't get special treatment, you know, if I played badly, I wouldn't get to stay on the pitch. If someone, you know, you've got to treat yourself, you've got to try and go to step back a wee bit and say, well, if I'm playing like that, can I, you know, is that good enough or will I tell him to do that, but I'm not doing it, you know, so you've got, you've got to step back and have a wee look, but as long as you're fair and that, I think that the players will respect you, and I think if you if you're doing your bit on the pitch and the training pitch as well, you know you you'll be fine. You'll I don't know think. if you did that, Sandy. I remember you ma managing Hearts reserves and you played every game. You were forty. I'm still the best, <laughs> still the best player. <laughs> what about the banter? Does it affect the banter between obviously your coaching a bit now and? Can you still get involved in the banter? You can much, still get or? involved in the banter, and I think you become the brunt of more jokes. I'm now the, I'm now, you, you, uh, especially you're not, me. But you won't be allowed a mistake. That's right, exactly. Any, yeah. any mistake you make, if you do anything that's wrong, you'll get absolutely. Like if, we're play, if you're playing a, a circle on training, maybe two in the middle in the restaurant outside, and if I'm the one that gets nutmegged, they're all doing cartwheels and all that, you know, whereas <laughs> normally if it's you. So you, you become the brunt of the jokes. So you see, good. Graham, it happens right through the I game. Know. <laughs> yeah, play, play as long as you can. Well, that's, that's the secret. Sad. Because see, see when you, you know, but I keep saying that to Butch as well, that you get to a stage where you can't physically play and it's murder because mm -hmm. it's much better, much more enjoyable than it is. And the, the coaching and management side is a great substitute, but you can't be playing. I, I know, I mean, luckily I've not really had any bad injuries right. throughout my career at all, so... I'm a How old are you, Graham? You've known me in the school. I'm a young 34. Oh, brilliant. So, You've had at least another uh, five or six years yet. Ah, well, 10 or 20. There's <laughs> <laughs> like you say, until my body says Absolutely. I can't play any more, and, or I feel that I've got nothing left to get that team. Yeah. And you're obviously it. living like an athlete because I'm just saying, either Green, where do I know you from? And it's our local pub. Uh, so <laughs> that's what I know the, from. The next, the next time we are in the fairway, you're going to die Coke. <laughs> <laughs> With two pints. Uh, it's, it's fresh orange and lemonade that I drink. Uh, I'll, well, I'll be watching uh, in the future. <laughs> but Green, it's uh, uh, another wee bit on it. Who can I run the club at the top end? Is there somebody in charge of it? I will. Uh, how like, do you raise funds? That kind of thing. How do you our manager, um, Stevie Lynch, he's like, head man right. and then we've got Reg Cook Kelvin who's like a secretary right. and Paul Spooner who's like a coach they've all been together 
for years. They brought the team up through since they were under sevens. Oh, brilliant. And then they're still there, so they're like the three like head honchos. Uh, there's then, there's a good foundation there, obviously. Uh, yeah. And then we had like a player of the year dance at the end of the year last year, so we had like raffles, right. things like that, to yeah. raise money for new strips because we was changing our name this year from Lodi Hearts. Right. We needed new yeah. set of strips. Right, so you had to get that. Uh, so. and I think that's back to We've spoke before about the, the, the amount of involvement in football from people in West Lothian is incredible. Yeah. Not, not, you know, we talk about Livingston, obviously, as a senior club. Uh, and how well they've really achieved, how much they've achieved over the years. But the junior and the amateur scene is, is incredible. Oh, it's a the 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 from people. Yeah. So many clubs are doing yeah. a similar type of thing, and it's because they want to do it, and they want to play, and they want the camaraderie. Yeah. And, and as football people, Bucks and I, and you as well, we obviously totally appreciate you know the rewards of that. Is you know you can't beat it. You can't get, beat the, the togetherness. Graeme, just to explain why was the change decided on from Levy Hearts to Livingston Community? Well, it was they've got. Um, not just their team, there's other teams like younger teams and there's a ladies team as well. Mm-hmm. So they felt uh, overall by changing it to a community football club, they could then get more of the community involved and, attract more and then try and get like more of the youngsters to like come along and play. So Especially if you're a hippie. Well, that's, that's the thing, they play against my kids as well in Livingston Hearts and it was always Hearts fans went to them mm-hmm. and no one else really, yeah, you know, yeah, so I yeah. think that they've opened it to a wider audience, you know, so I think that for me it's probably a better idea, you know, I uh, think that you know, in Scotland, you know, we know we're like Hearts, Hibs, Celtic yeah, Rangers. Yeah. As soon as that one name's mentioned, you're yeah. you, you're against them for whatever reason. Yeah. So it's for me, it's much better, much better for them. Because mm-hmm. there's a girls team as well, and so my daughter plays against their team as well. It's like right. under eleven, so it's great. It's really, really, it's good. So they've got teams all the way right up and down. Who's your daughter playing with? Bud? She plays the Muriston and girls. Right. Muris is a massive one as well, isn't it? In this area. Oh, of course, uh, absolutely. Going back a lot of years. Yeah, yeah. Spent a lot of time there. And listen, has she got? Has she got a dad's talent? She has, aye. Eh? She's decent, aye. Eh? Excellent. She's she's good, aye. Eh? She she wants to be a football player. I think she probably could. Eh? Brilliant. So we'll see. She wants to head for America. Aye, eh? definitely. That's the yeah. plan. Scholarship in America. Yeah, definitely. absolutely. Fantastic. I can, she needs to pick between gymnastics and football. I mean, aye. Never mind. Eh? <laughs> That's fantastic, go. Graham. Thanks for coming on the show and You're joining welcome. us here. And we'll try and get out and get his on one of the, the Sunday highlight shows Definitely. soon because he's are a young and exciting uh, team. Well, maybe exception to yourself. He's are a young. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> excited. <laughs> <laughs> he's excited on a night. Yes, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> but he's got, he's got a trophy in here to prove his success. Yeah. Which is great. So good, good luck, Graham. Go and keep it going. Keep playing as long as you can. And we'll try to the the club. That's fantastic. Thank you, Graham. And join us after the break and we'll ask the guests. Uh, our guest question for the week. Welcome back. Well, it's that time of the week. It's the guest question. We did mention just before the break, and during the break, we were having a little chat there. The question, of course, is what is your favourite European Championships moment? Every one of them in this couch went, mm, I don't know, I don't know. Then we developed our eight the most. <laughs> <laughs> now they've all got loads, loads of questions. So um, who will we start with? But since you've got loads, I no. I, my favourite is uh, Euro '96. It was you know I was growing up at the time. I was obviously I was fifteen. I was really into football. Fifteen, sixteen. I was you know watching it and the whole tournament in England. You know being so close, just everything about it was unbelievable. Actually, at the time Scotland were there, you know, and we eventually got put out. But after that, I was wanting England to go and win it. At that age, I really was. I was one of the guys that supported England, and I, I thought they had with Shearer and sharing them up front. I thought they were unbelievable. You know, and I was, you know, I was a lot young striker, and I was looking at the way they were playing and thinking, I want to be the guys. You know, they were, they were brilliant. So for me, it was a whole Euro '96, and I'm just gutted that we've not really had a, a big tournament back here again since. You know, I think that. Did you go and watch much? Did you? I didn't. Not. I, I didn't. Time. I watched it on the t- everything on the TV. I but it was. It was, it was a great. great it was a great tournament. And obviously, it was one of the last. It was the last European Championship that Scotland went to. You know, so it was. It's, a, it's, it's the only real memories we've got. You set the question, Graeme, So you must have won in mind. Yeah, I do. Um, my memory is from Euro '96 as well, and it, like you said, Birch, it was one of the first tournaments that I watched. It was really exciting, and I was kind of the same. Like obviously, Scotland's still in it, but I had quite a, an affinity for for the English team as well. And it was the, the Paul Gascoigne goal against Scotland, which might not go down too well with some people at home. But looking back, I, I cried at the time when he did score because Scotland lost. But looking back, it's probably one of the best goals I've ever seen. Just the long ball down and then he knocks it over Henry's head, comes down and just 
finds a pass for him. Celebration wasn't too bad either. I know, it was a <laughs> top class celebration. A couple of things yeah. for that game. The first one, affinity with England. Right, you've got to be serious thinking about that, okay? <laughs> uh, especially with the referendum coming up, but that's another question. Well, and the, uh, the, the impartiality there, you just said you followed England, and now you're saying we've not. So there we go. There we go. We've even that one up. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> but going back to that game, is that the game, I'm sure it was, that Gary McAllister had missed the penalty? <gasps> That's yeah, right. and it was moments before. It was about a minute yeah. before or yeah, two yeah. minutes before, that's right. And yeah. the big story from that, of course, was Uri Geller, who said that he had actually focused everybody's mind on moving the ball. Yeah. And th- I remember seeing photographs of close-ups or something, the ball did move. It did move. It, did, it actually it did, did move. move. Uri Geller said he was responsible for the, that. This moved right to the goalie, that's my memory. The, stra- <laughs> the strangest thing was as well, Gary McAllister, had, his penalty record was incredible yeah. at that time, and he side-footed everything in the corner. It just shows you what pressure does to you. Yep. Scotland, England, and you decide to blast it down the middle, it hits the keeper. Exactly. Incredible, yeah, incredible. Yep. I'm going to go back to 1992, I think. You guys are going to be keeping me right. Only for a, a kind of funny reason, it was actually in Sweden, and there are two, two memories. One, the, the Scottish fan kissing the, the female uh, policewoman police through the fence. Yep. Uh, I don't know if it, what happened to that, if it was an outcome of that, it's some kind, I'm not too sure. Uh, but the actual tournament was won by Denmark, and only my memory of it, because it's one of the daft ones that stands out, is Denmark actually came into the tournament as a wild card. They didn't qualify, but Yugoslavia had a bit of conflict going on at the time, or a big bit of conflict going on at the time. Denmark came in at the last minute, it just shows you no preparation, squad picked up only days before the tournament started, and they won the tournament. So all that planning, etc. sometimes it can go out the window, but that's yeah. marking a, a big memory of the Euro uh, Championship. What about you, Graeme? Uh, mine's was Euro 96 as well. Um, Scotland were playing Switzerland, and it was 0-0 at the time. Um, Alan McCoy's had just been substituted onto the park and then the ball got played to him about 30 yards out and he just rattled it right in the top corner. So I can remember watching it with my family and as soon as it went in we were all jumping about the living room screaming. I've, uh, I'm sitting, I've got goosebumps as well thinking about it as well. I was watching it as well and everyone was going mental in my house as well. I think actually McCoy was crying in his celebration. Uh, yeah, you know, I think yeah. it was like one of the really emotional times you know, in his career and in a, Scottish football. I think it was the first time he came on the park in the championships. Is that right? I think he got played in the game before it. My memory of that one is, I remember the goal well, was did he not have a wee kiss and a cuddle with Craig Brown? And, you know, I think he'd slaughter Craig for not being in the team. Right, <laughs> right. One and one of the games, scored the yeah. goal and, and, and ended up getting a result because of it. So, Knowing uh, Mr McCoy as I do, I think he'd have ego with the, the, the head coach for not having him on earlier. But uh, but as when you think about it, I'm, I'm saying agree, what a horrible question. But there are tons of very, very I know, I think it's probably in our minds, you know, because it's been so long, you know, yeah, you're thinking, right. you know, when did the good bits happen? The next one will start on Sunday. Yep, absolutely. I'm, I'm going back to family, a, a favourite one, and again, it's not a good one in the respect that we, we were beaten, but I'm um, going back to 99, it was, uh, we were at the game, Sandy, the, the photos with the boys at the, um, at Hamden for um, Scotland versus England, Paul Scobes scored twice, of course. But I, I just I remember the atmosphere, it just yeah. it was it yeah, was yeah, terrific yeah. and I remember Rod Stewart coming and sitting in front of us as well at that game. That so. was obviously, I don't know if you know, I, I, I came on a sub in that game, eh? so it was like 80,000 fans booing you running on the pitch, you know, it was quite intimidating, <laughs> but it was, uh, uh, it was a great atmosphere, it was unbelievable. That's probably why that was my favourite one, but <laughs> I must have got the vibes right? from you there. <laughs> <laughs> But what was that like? It was I mean, incredible, incredible. Uh, that's all I can really remember for the game is when it was uh, when I ran on a sub and I was the first sub on in the game and the whole stadium just booed. It was incredible. It was really, really just one of the eerie atmospheres, eh? but it was great to be involved. Why were they booing? English fans were booing the Scottish player, obviously. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was because it, uh, it was obviously 70-30, 70-30, sorry. Uh, yeah. English fans. Is that the game at Wembley you're talking about? At uh, Wembley. Uh, yeah, no, I'm talking about Hamden. Oh, sorry, I thought you were at Wembley. Yeah, 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 All yeah. oh, right, sorry. Yeah. sorry but what did you win that game? Yeah, one nil. One, one nil. Yeah, right. we lost two nil at Hamden the first uh, game. Yeah. 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 I'm wondering why they're booing you. I just thought it was a very good player. Does the Scotland fans I am getting mixed up. No, no. Because my memory at Hamden that day was just like, it was a wash with salt tyre. It was just the normal. It was the normal. Yeah, it was great. No, they cheered me that day. Yeah, sorry. So see, we have we have got loads of good memories. You were, you were getting absolute pelters there, Graeme, for setting that question. I know, I was, I was, but it's it's an exciting tournament, and I think that's that's the great thing about it. World Cups out of the way now, move on, and that's where all the excitement's coming from for this, the Scotland team and everything. And as so. Sandy said, maybe um hopefully the the new memories will be built starting from Sunday. Yeah, let's hope so. Hopefully we can make it to a major tournament, and it'll give us something a bit more to talk about here on the couch. Definitely, football. absolutely. 
So join us next time on Affinity Football, and I'm sure Birch and Sandy will be back here with us, along with you, Liz, as well. Yeah, I might appear. <laughs> <laughs> so tune in next time. We'll see you then. <laughs>